finally here, Medigital 3 for iOS. That means that you can use this really powerful software now on your iPhone or on your iPad for now. This is out for anybody to test as far as I know and you can head on over to the MIDI guitar forum for a test flight link if you want to try this out. What are the upsides of using this on your iPhone? Portability would be one of course. So in the best case, this portability stuff means that I can go anywhere and play everywhere with just perhaps a guitar and my iPhone. So this is a pitch to MIDI solution. Traditionally that would have meant that you would have had some special microphone on your guitar to be able to feed into this uh, software but with Jam Origins Mid Guitar 3 everything became so much easier because now you can also use your regular pickups straight into whatever you're using so if you want to use your iPhone the only connection you have to have really is some sort of connection between your guitar's audio out and into your iPhone. This part would go right into the phone of course and this is just a wireless receiver so the real difference between using a desktop computer and an iPad or an iPhone will actually be the kind of instruments that you're able to play because every sort of instrument isn't available from the app store or whatever. In terms of functionality I would say that it's really not that big of a difference. However when it comes to connectivity I would say that there absolutely is because with your desktop computer you can physically connect all of your controllers via cables and stuff like this but that becomes kind of a problem when you're using iPads and iPhones. You really would like to have something like a Bluetooth connection, I would guess. I will need something like a speaker, of course, but that I'll connect to what is my go-to audio interface, which is something like this. This is an audio interface that I actually can bring along everywhere. So if I can bring along my iPhone, I certainly can bring along my iRig if I know that I'm going to play. And if I'm going to play with something like a guitar, I can most certainly see to that I get my iRig along. It's not as easy to bring along something like even a Focusrite Scarlett solo. It needs to be powered and that's a main thing for me. I can use power banks for most of my Bluetooth setup. So I will bring along a power bank for if I'm using a breath controller that doesn't have its own Bluetooth connectivity. But I will most surely look for all the kinds of controllers that have this internal connectivity already coming with it. Having power to all of this stuff, having all the devices charged, that's going to be the thing that I'm going to have to be mindful of in the future. A brief overview of this software. In the MIDI Guitar 3 software you have the tracker and they have three chains and that's like channels or buses in, in your traditional DAW. In these chains you can use any sort of combination of instrument and effects and you also have a full set of MIDI machines which is helper tools from uh, the MIDI Guitar software. And in there you have MIDI devices, you have audio ins and you have stuff that you can put in these chains and save together with any instruments to create effects. You have modulators so you can go in and precisely control any parameter within almost any of the instruments. So it's a really, really precise tool when it comes to sound sculpting if you want to. You save patches together with these instruments and modulators, but also with those external MIDI controllers that you used when you set up these patches. So if you're new to this, most of the information that you would need, you'll find in the videos already available on MIDI Guitar 3. But I'm going to point to some of the differences you'd notice if you were to use MIDI Guitar 3 with an iPhone rather than an iPad. If we look at the MIDI Guitar software here in uh, vertical mode, you see the controllers at the bottom and you see just barely something like a keyboard. Most of us are going to use this software in this horizontal mode and 
in the horizontal mode you won't see any keyboard and you also see that the placement of the connectors that would be the MIDI controller patch bay area from the MIDI Guitar 3 software has moved and is now placed besides the tracker instead. It's not a biggie but it's good to know. The first two assignments on the top row, the CC14 and CC15 are used by the system to patch up and down so you shouldn't use that for anything else. The other ones you can use as you please. Of course it's going to be problematic to click on everything because it's so very small but you can click on the assignment and get a MIDI learn for instance and then click on your controller and here and the controller output in MIDI Guitar 3 will show the CC assignment that that controller is set to. Also use the invert function, the latch function just as you could before. And it's just as easy as before to connect MIDI controller connectors to any of the parameters inside of MIDI Guitar 3. It's just way smaller right now. And with this shrinkflation of our workspace comes the third change actually to the software. That's the plugin windows aspect ratio. You'll find a new button below the band range settings on any modules for any new plugins in MIDI Guitar. Depending on what kind of plugin you're using, the difference between a 3 to 1 aspect ratio as compared to a 4 to 3 aspect ratio render dramatically different views for you to work in and the workspaces will even be completely different. So if you're using say a swarm instrument with 3 to 1 aspect ratio, you'll only get this limited little strip down below and you won't even get to all the settings that you have available traditionally. This is what a swarm bass clarinet looks like in my iPad with this 3 to 1 aspect ratio. But there's really not that much. These are made for the horizontal mode for say a iPhone really. If I change this to the 3 to 2 aspect ratio, I will get this huge part of the screen covered by this instead. Or if I change to the third option that is 4 to 3, I'll get it a bit more condensed. It might be easier to see all the knobs and the parameters in the synth like this. You choose but now you know there's a new button on the modules and that's the window aspect ratio button. You can use it if you feel that everything is too small for you to access in either the iPad or the iPhone. So lastly here I'll bring this backpack of different controllers and show you how easy it is to actually have them work together with such a minimal setup as my guitar and an iPhone. There are some different software that you might need to be able to facilitate this connection between your controllers and some virtual instruments that you're going to use. I'm using a BLE MIDI right now in my iPhone. It gives me no problem connecting with multiple controllers at the same time via this protocol. I just powered up my a breath controller setup and that's a power bank into this and this is connected to my breath controller. I can connect this expression pedal just by turning this on. You'll see that it appears on my phone and I connect that. So now it's connected and that's perfect because I can use this, the control one, two together with this dual foot switch to control CC14 and 15 for patch up and down in MIDI guitar. It's actually the boss pedal's Bluetooth connection that will forward these patch up and down messages into my iPhone. So what's left is perhaps some sort of distinction between the standalone use and the plugin use. There are some limitations to using AUV3s inside of other AUV3s, so that is going to affect these setups, at least initially. I've tried stuff like Loopy Pro inside of MIDI Guitar and I couldn't get that to work, but if I set up Loopy Pro inside of AUM on a channel and MIDI Guitar 3 in one channel, I can get that to work flawlessly. But then you might try to use some of the AUV3 synths inside of MIDI guitar inside of AUM and that won't work. So it's going to be a bit of a finding out phase right now and I guess we can all make an effort and 
help the developer out with whatever needs fixing. But don't forget to enjoy yourself while doing this. It's a lot of fun and I'm so happy to see that this software is finally out on iOS as well. So see you later and bye.